Hi folks, excuse my bed head. I haven't uh, combed my hair today yet. <laughs> it's not that early actually, I've been working. It's about one in the afternoon. But I, I'm, we're taking a break from work and I thought I'd come out here and check on my, my little seedlings that I have on the front porch. And I have a lot in the back too. I'm gonna show you those as well. Um, but I wanted to show you what I'm doing here on the front porch, getting ready for, hopefully getting ready for a new homestead that we have put an offer in on. Uh, if it gets approved and five other magical things fall into place, we should be there this year sometime. But uh, let me uh, show you what I'm doing. So what I have here, now some of these pots you're going to say, oh, what's going on with that? These were uh, things that I had growing that just didn't work out. Uh, these two dry pots were some, um, oh, what do you call that stuff? I'll come back to it in a minute when I remember it. But I, I grew it from cuttings that the wife was going to throw away. I put it in water, it grew roots, I put it in here. Uh, bok choy, that's what it was, bok choy. But here we have some apples. Now one day, my son and I were eating an apple and it was very delicious. I don't know what kind it was. It was either probably a honey crisp or a pink lady. But I said, this apple is so good that I am gonna plant these seeds. And I did, and about a month later, they sprung up. So I got that guy, one, two, three, four really good ones. And over here I have the runts. They sprung up later, and they're really small, but they were all planted at the same time. So I don't know if they're gonna be runt trees or what. I also have some green onions that uh, the wife had cut and was gonna throw the stubs away, the little nibs, so I put them in water, they rooted. I had them in water for a long time, and then I decided I'm gonna go ahead and put them in dirt now, and I put, I put each one in a different kind of dirt that I found locally here. This one's in some black dirt I found, this one's in some red dirt I found. I thought I'd try that and see if one was dirt was better than the other, but they actually seem to be doing about the same. So I need to water these guys today. Oh, and then I have a, a sprig of kale that was going to get tossed out. So I put that in some water. It's still alive, but it hasn't really grown any roots. So I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to put it in dirt. What's going on in the front yard? Got a couple things out here. This guy is a loquat tree. You probably don't know what a loquat is unless you live in San Antonio because they're everywhere here. Um, I put him in the ground about three years ago. Maybe two years ago. Yeah, two. I uh, got him from my good friend Daddy Curbs as well in a little pot. Picked this spot in the yard. They love sun. They do really well in the heat. I don't, they never die, no matter how dry they get. So put it there. I created a small uh, in-ground swale, I guess you'd call it. There's no real berm, but when it rains a lot, the water collects in there and sinks down for the roots of this guy. Here in the middle of the yard is a bald cypress. Got it for 20 bucks at Lowe's. And that's about four years old now. Way taller and way thicker than it was, guaranteed, when I planted it at least. And over here is a rosemary bush. This came out of like a half gallon pot. It was really small. Rosemary does amazing here in San Antonio and you can see the flowers all over it. And it has had flowers even during the coldest times, which is awesome for, guess who? The bees, where are the bees? They're everywhere. There's a couple busy working. They love the rosemary flowers. They're a good source of food for them. And I watched the bees real close the other day and I noticed that they really love the flowers that are not open yet. And what they'll do, they sit there and they, they pry the unopened blossom open and get inside. I guess that's where the best uh, nectar is or something. That was pretty interesting. And over here is a pear tree I planted about five years ago. It has produced one pear. And oh my goodness, today's the first day that I noticed this. Flowers. It has never really flowered much. And it looks like maybe this year could be the year I actually get usable fruit off this thing. Like I say, it produced one pear last year, and I only found it 
because we had a windstorm that blew it off the tree and I found it on the ground. And I went ahead and ate it because I wanted to taste it and it was our pear and it was good. So wow, lots of blossoms, which I assume the bees were like pear blossoms too. So we're helping the pollinators there. And one other thing real quick while I'm at it and I see some dandelions in the yard. Guys, girls, people of all ages, whoever can understand my voice, these are not weeds. These are plants. Sometimes misunderstood plants, but they're plants. They're flowers. They're food for the bees. These are one of the early blooming flowers in this area, in most areas, and the bees use them for nectar. Not only that, but if you're so inclined and you have enough dandelions, you can harvest them, the flowers, and make things out of the flowers. You can make wine, you can make jelly. They're good. You can eat the greens. They're very good for you. And I'm told that the roots, the tap roots of these guys, which are very long and thin carrot-like, um, are also healthy for you. I've never eaten them, but I keep that in mind in case I ever need to or want to. All right, and the last thing I have growing that's edible is this you know, it's kind of an oxymoron to say it, but dwarf pomegranate tree, it got kind of big for a dwarf, right? Now this guy, or girl, has produced, uh, <clears throat> we'll see it. First of all, it's been in the ground about five or six years also. And it has produced probably a dozen pomegranates over that time. Uh, they're not big because it is a dwarf pomegranate. And in, ten, in fact, and I didn't know this when I planted it, but in fact, when you cut them open, the skin is kind of thick. Uh, and there's not a whole lot of, you know, fruit inside. But what is inside is really good. So, so this guy's waking up as well. Only in the last few days or last you know, week at the most has it started waking up. So everything's waking up here. Spring is here. And if all goes as planned, I will not be here to see this guy fruit because we are attempting to purchase our own homestead. We've listed this house, which if any of you are interested, let me know. Uh, it's a, we listed it at a reasonable price. So hopefully we'll have a homestead before the summer strikes. That'll be awesome. Okay, quick tour of what I've got going on back here. Um, first of all, I put, I have a pallet that I found by a dumpster. So I brought this pallet out here. I set it on some cardboard. I laid the cardboard on some weeds I wanted to kill. So I'm basically mulching the weeds in place. Uh, the pallet's on top of that. I wrapped the pallet in some uh, painter's plastic that I had rolled up. And then I put the plants on top. So let me introduce you to the plants. Now here in these fabric pots that I made myself from just a weed, weed guard, I guess it's called, it comes in a big roll. I rolled it around a, um, like a one gallon or you know, this is more like a two or three gallon pot. And I used duct tape to keep it in place. And at the very bottom, I twisted it closed with some wire and made these fabric pots that seem to be working pretty good. But here we have a sad little grapefruit who who has lost all its leaves. I'm not sure why, but it's still green and alive. So who knows, it might come back good. Um, here's another grapefruit. And these were all planted at the same time. Some just did better than others. And uh-oh, looks like I have a, a volunteer red oak. Um, probably some, the silly squirrels get into my plants and bury and dig up acorns. So that's a red oak right there. Somehow an acorn got in there. So I'll have to, Pull that guy out and maybe put it in a pot. Uh, I, I just can't really kill plants. I'll put it in a pot and if it grows I'll take it with us to the new homestead and plant it there. Um, but as you can see here I've got some more grapefruit in fabric pots and actually one of these is not a grapefruit. It's an orange. And you know what? I can't remember which one. Maybe it's this one because his leaves look a little different. I don't know. I'll find out when they get bigger I guess. And this one's doing really well. Uh, of course, I've got some pecans planted there that I hope will spring up in a month or so. 
And some, you know, I make the mistake of not labeling my pots, and sometimes I forget what I planted there. So I just have to wait till it pops up. I know I got jujubes in that yellow one. Uh, there's a red oak I found growing in one of my other grapefruits that I planted in that pot. Uh, I've got a couple of lemons. Let's see, here's one. We were at IHOP. We asked for lemons with our water, and they gave us a lemon that had the smoothest skin, and it was just so good. I kept the seeds. We, I collected all the seeds from people around the table and planted them, and that one grew. And one of these others, I thought one of the others was sprouting up too, but I don't see it now. But I'm, is it this guy? Yeah, right there. It's very tiny, but he's starting to pop up. So I got at least two coming. Uh, that guy's a pecan. My dad dug it out of his yard before he died and gave it to me and I put it in a pot. And that's another pecan from his yard as well. Did really well last year. Pecans wake up later than the other trees. So the pecans are not awake yet. In here I've planted several what's called escarpment cherries. Uh, they do well in my climate down here in south central Texas. So I planted those for uh, transplanting onto the new homestead that we will someday get eventually. These are some garlics that I went to make some, uh, what was I making? Eggs, I think, and needed some garlic. And every clove I picked up had a little green spot on it. And I, I just decided I couldn't eat that. I had to plant it. So I stuck the garlic in there and it's coming up. This guy, this guy, this guy, this big guy there, and a couple little ones back there are all persimmons, wild Texas persimmons. And I gathered those seeds. I collected them from coon poop. Coons eat persimmons, then they poop the seeds. And once the seeds are pooped out and you find them in some dry poop, they grow really well. So I planted them all about, this has been about, this is the third year, I think. Uh, it took them over a month to sprout, but they finally popped up. So I'm hoping, and they're starting to wake up, some of them. This little one isn't. I hope it didn't die this year. But I'm going to also transplant these wild Texas persimmons to our homestead wherever, whenever we get it. And over here in the corner... This one's doing really well. That guy in the green pot is a mulberry tree that I got from my good friend, Daddy Curbs, about two years ago. And uh, this year it started to try to get some fruit and I was really impressed. I was like, wow, it's kind of young for that. But you can see the little fruits that started to grow, they just kind of dried up. And I'm assuming that's probably because the tree's just young. I was surprised it even tried to get fruit. So I'm gonna, I'm thinking of these as a, like the practice run for making mulberries, but it's doing well. And of course, I'll find a good home for that on the homestead too. And the last couple of guys over here, this sad looking pepper plant. I uh, did an experiment to see, can I raise peppers indoors? So this guy's actually been in the house for two years. I found these two pepper plants growing when I had accidentally I guess I was throwing a piece of, of a cut up pepper to the chickens and it got in the dirt and started to grow. So I just kept it growing. Now this guy did produce peppers for me in the house, not large ones. Um, and this will sound a little, might sound a little gross to you, but I did some other experiments with fertilizer and I actually watered it with, um, <laughs> with pea water. About, uh, about every fifth time I watered it, I had a little pea in the water. And it responded so amazing. I'm, I can't even tell you how, I was so shocked. It grew all kinds of greenery, all, it put out all kinds of flowers. It produced, it produced the most peppers when I gave it pee. <laughs> it liked it, that's all I can say. Um, that's all I will say about that. Here's another grapefruit. Now this guy was planted the same time as the others you saw. The only difference is, I kept this one indoors the entire time. I only moved it outdoors just a week or so ago um, because we had to, had to clear out the upstairs for a, we're sh for a showing. We actually listed our house. And this sad little red pot had a red oak in it and until the other day when a squirrel got in there, dug it out and or ate it, I guess. I noticed them, uh, let me show you this red oak tree coming alive over here. You can see the very fresh tender leaves on this red oak 
And I've seen the squirrels up in the tree just chowing down on them like salad. So I think they like them when they're young and tender. And this guy was young and tender just the other day. Now he's gone. All right. Oh, a couple other things. I'll show you real quick. I saw this yesterday. That is a grapefruit tree. Now, a year and a half ago, I had a grapefruit tree right there. And it, it's one I grew from seed. I put it in the ground. It was about six years old a year and a half ago. And it gave me the biggest bounty of grapefruits ever. It was amazing. The rats killed my tree. They ate, literally ate the bark off of that, almost that entire tree. They didn't eat the fruit. They ate the bark and they killed it. I was mad. I was sad. I killed myself many rats. Of course, I couldn't kill them all. Eventually, I had to cut the tree down and dig the stump up. But from all those fruits, many that had fallen and whatever, this guy managed to grow. And uh, the other grapefruits that you saw, those are planted from the children of the tree that was killed by the rats. So they are its offspring. But yeah, I'm going to dig this guy up and put him in a pot. Hopefully I can do it without hurting it. Because uh, it, it just can't grow where it's at. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, adopt it. And the last thing I'm going to show you is my Concord grapevines. Now grapevines apparently, they wake up late as well. But, I've I, so I watch it every year to find out you know, when it's starting to make sure it's still alive. And it is it's doing well, but you can see little fat buds right there. And once it starts waking up, it goes fast and it, this thing gets so full. I planted two little Concord grapevines. It's been about seven years ago. Now these guys, these vines are seven years old. They produce all kinds of fruit. Um, but they were so tiny. And when I planted them, the, the instruction said, put them six feet apart. And I thought, what? Six feet apart? They're so tiny. But now look at them. It's a good thing I put them six feet apart. They're like little trees. Yeah, so I'm very pleased and happy about this, this grape arbor. And it looks really pretty when the, when the vines are all awake and the leaves are all over it. And the birds like the grapes. I attempt to get them, but I never seem to get them before the birds. So I just, eh, I let them have them. Okay, uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Is there anything else? There's a pecan tree. This also came from my dad's yard a couple years before the ones in the pots. And without, without exaggeration, every single year, this tree at least doubles in height. And I expect that it will this year as well. It's it's only been in the ground. This is its third year. Uh, it's doing amazing. And over here is my orange tree. This is about its fourth year in the ground. I didn't choose the location well. It doesn't get a lot of sun, a lot of you know hours and hours of sun. It does get some direct sun, but not enough. So every year I baby it and I cover it up when the really cold weather comes and. Uh, last year it produced three oranges and I ate them and they were delicious. This year I can see already that it does have flowers. There's some little flower buds there. They're going to bloom. And you know what? If you've never smelled orange blossoms, they are amazing. They are beautiful to the nose. So each flower has the potential to become an orange and this year the tree's a little bigger the trunk's a little thicker and I have been watching it for uh, signs of anything trying to eat the bark off of it oh so I know there's still mice around here I haven't seen rats but I know there's mice my dog goes crazy when he smells them so yeah that's the uh, orange tree it's not regular oranges either it's the small the short squat oranges, I don't know what you call them. Maybe, I don't think they're tangerines, but some kind of, a, of an orange. So that that's the, you know, the kind of homesteading I've been trying to do here in suburban San Antonio. 
Um, just a quick little view of the yard. You can see the whole thing. Oh, and this stone structure is a berm and swale that me and the kids made. Oh, that was hard, hard work. In order to capture the rainwater we get when it does rain and sink it down and to the roots of this really old live oak. I used to have two really old live oaks, see the stump? But the guys who built the house traumatized it so badly that it died and I had to pay a thousand dollars to have it removed. You know, that was sad, Ooh, it was really sad. But I did keep the wood, from, a lot of the wood from that tree on that wood pile down there. It's mostly gone now after many years of using it in the fireplace. Uh, and there's my compost pile. I haven't actually used the compost for anything, but I do continue to feed it and stir it up once in a while. And I have dug down there and got a few handfuls of good soil for individual pots that I was planting. So, all right, that's what we're doing out here. Thanks for your time and visiting with me and walking around with me a little bit. It's not a lot, but it's something. And you know what? Just doing a little something, even if you live in an apartment. If you have sun anywhere striking your window, you have opportunity to grow something. And if you don't have that, grow mushrooms. Do something. Raise fish. Do some aquaponics indoors with a grow light. You're not uh, limited just because you don't have a farm. Make a farm wherever you are. It doesn't have to be big. Make it little. Grow greens in the kitchen. No big deal. But do something. Practice. Learn. You won't learn anything unless you try it. You can watch all these videos all day long, 24-7, and you'll gain some knowledge. But until you apply that knowledge, you have no wisdom. You have no experience. You don't really have knowledge at all until you've tried it and learned from it. So I highly recommend it. Just do it. And then, you know what? Share your journey. Get on Steam It. Get on YouTube. Get on uh, wherever. Share what you're learning with other people. Inspire them. That's why, that's why I've done a lot of the things I've done. Inspired by other people who took the time and cared enough to share. So let's do that. Let's all do that. Thanks.